Welcome to the Michael Singer Podcast, presented by Sounds True, in partnership with Shanti Publications. For more information about Michael Singer's work, access to all prior episodes, and information about upcoming releases, we invite you to join us at michaelsingerpodcast.com. Jagradev, Jamastras. There's always two sides to a coin, two ways to look at things, which are really one coin, but there's two sides. So spirituality, everybody wants to get high. They want to find ways to be high. True spirituality, you will eventually mature into, is about not getting low. If you don't get low, you will be high. If you're trying to get high, the very fact that you're trying means there's something stopping you. That's the essence of the deeper spiritual teachings. There's a quote from Rumi that hangs in the Sanctuary of Wisdom at the Neurovascular Hospital at Chans. And it says something like, it's paraphrased, it is not for you to seek love is but for you to seek and find the obstacles you have put in her place. Now, Rumi is as deep as they come. The real deep teachings are that. If you have to seek love, there's something stopping it. There's something holding you back. You will keep seeking. You will keep reaching. You will keep trying. If you try to find out why you don't feel love, what is holding you back, it will naturally take place. You don't have to do anything. In the end of the spiritual path, you do nothing. You do nothing. There's nothing to do. It all exists by itself. It's like I teach you sometimes. It's not about going to God. It's about not leaving. This is when it gets deep. You understand you're already there. You've always been there. You'll never not be there. But you are being distracted by yourself, by your psyche, by your mind, by your heart, by your personal stuff. All right? Therefore, you're leaving God to hang out with you. So it's not about, I'm hanging out with me. How do I find God? You can't find God because you're the consciousness that left. What you learn to do is say, why did I leave? Why am I hanging out with this lower stuff? So that's the essence of deep spirituality. If you let go of what's holding you back, you naturally find yourself up. I I always use the example of a hot air balloon. It's got the air in it. It's got the helium in it. It's trying to rise. Don't put more helium in it. Don't put more hot air in it. Cut the tethers. There's something holding it down. If you get rid of what's holding it down, so to speak, untether it, right, it will rise up naturally. You don't do anything. So that's the same thing with your spiritual growth. But are people ready for that? So what does it mean? It means there are times where you feel high. There are times where you feel open. There are times you feel love. If you want, and you will naturally do it, you will try to cling to that. You'll try to hold on to that. You'll try to keep that. Instead of paying attention, what's bringing me down? Why do I have to try to keep it? Is it that it's not my natural state? I'm beating down the doors of heaven. I don't belong there. What is it that's holding me back? That is true spirituality. And so eventually you come down to realize that every moment of your life is an opportunity for spiritual growth because either you're feeling high and it's very nice or you're paying attention to what brings you down. If you tried to talk to me about, oh, I had this beautiful experience, I got Shakti Pada, I met this master, I had this vision. All right, very good. I'll ask you a very simple question. Why did every single thing you say be in the past tense? I had this, I saw this, I experienced that 20 years ago. All right, because it's not happening anymore. I'm more interested in why you come back down as opposed to what made you go up. Because I guarantee you, what made you go up last time may not make you go up next time. There's a law of diminishing returns. You get used to stuff. But if you pay attention, here I feel love, then something happened. I don't feel love. That's the holiest moment of your life. 
That is so important. It's more important than why did you feel love? Why did it stop? Because if you get rid of why it stopped, you will always feel love effortlessly. It will never go away from you. But if you sit there and try to create situations and do things that make you feel love, you haven't dealt with what's holding you back. And it's going to come back. You know that. The heart does not stay open. It's going to close. So it's not what will open my heart. It's why does it close? And that I've been doing this for over 50 years. That's where you end up. That's where your work is, at the root. Buddhists say work at the root. That's the root. The rest is just the flowers, and they don't last, do they? Come on. Okay? So if you work at the root, it just naturally goes up. So what does it mean to work at the root? It's a whole different way of dealing with yourself. So you start with this. Do you ever find that you were excited, you were enthused about a relationship, about a job or so on, and then at some point, not just years later, minutes later, you don't feel the enthusiasm. You don't feel the intense love that you felt. You better shake your head yes, because I know it's true, okay? The question is not how do I get it back? Why did it stop? Because it's your heart. It opens and closes, believe it or not, because you tell it to. You don't think you do, but you do. So you sit there and say, well, well, he or she didn't say exactly what I thought they were going to say. I don't know if I can trust them. There it is, gone. That's all it takes, isn't it? Bam, the door closes, right? So it's not about convincing them to say what you want them to say. That's a never-ending battle. It's about saying, why do I close? Why do I feel the need to protect myself if it takes away the very thing that I want? which is love or enthusiasm. Why am I giving that up to protect myself? Protect myself from what? And you start questioning, and that's where your real work is. Why am I protecting myself? People ask me all the time, and it's okay, it's fine. You grow a different thing. Aren't there boundaries? You have to set boundaries. You can't let people walk all over you. You have to set boundaries to things. You can't just accept things, all right? And to me, you're not going to get a yes to that question, but it's subtler than you think it is. Why? Anything you are protecting is your ego. That's what you're protecting. I'm protecting my ego. I'm afraid that he might leave me or that she might leave me, so I want to protect myself. Okay, what are you protecting? You're protecting your blockages. You're protecting what's going to make you close and so on. So you decide, I don't want to do that, and you're going to find it's not that easy not to do that, and that's wonderful for you to see. That's wonderful. It is not that easy, is it? Okay, it's like it's challenging, but at least you're challenging yourself. It doesn't involve somebody else. And so you come inside and what do you do? What do I do if I was feeling love, I was feeling enthusiasm, and now I'm feeling anxiety? Now I'm feeling some fear. Now I'm feeling trepidation. I was too open. I don't feel safe. Okay, you decide. Am I willing to give up love for this? Whose side am I going to take? the negative side or the positive side. And you will eventually catch on and say, I am willing to take the risk of letting go of why I close my heart so my heart can stay open. Well, what if I get hurt? It's worth it. That's what you'll get. You sit there and say, if I'm afraid of getting hurt, I'll never fully open. I will protect myself from love. I'll protect myself from you. I said, I love you, but not that much. Not enough to take that risk of hurting myself or hurting. So you have to be willing to get to the point spiritually to say, it's all about being willing to take the risk of not hanging out with the lower part of your being, which is very strong. Of course it's strong. You want to protect yourself. You want to feel safe. You want to feel you're in control. It's pure ego. You just get to the point where you say, yes, there's a part of me that certainly wants that. I'm not going to deny that. But I also see that's the very part that keeps me feeling love. It's the very part that keeps me feeling God. It's the very part, it's, it's unbelievable once you catch on that that is where your work is. Your work is not in avoiding that. Your work is not trying to create situations that let you not have to deal with that. Your work is dealing with that. So if all of a sudden you find yourself, you have felt love, and now you find yourself feeling closed, you find yourself being anxious, you find yourself being, I like to call it weird, Anyway, know about that? Ever feel weird? Okay, you know just what I mean. It just does that in there. Your tendency is to try to do something outside that will make it so that goes away, so I feel better. 
In other words, I'm not going to deal with this. I don't want to deal with this. Well, until you deal with it, it's always going to come back. Always. Period. It's coming back, isn't it? A lot of stuff you have in there has been essentially little, isn't it? Same person sitting in there causing the same problems, all right, that you couldn't handle different things in life. Well, at what point are you going to say, I don't want that running my life? And so you decide, that's my work. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to work, they call it the dark side, or sort of the shadow, your shadow self. I know they give it all kinds of names, all right? But that's what they're talking about. The part of your being that tends to be lower, it's lower, it's protective, and takes away your life. It takes away your life. So how do you work with that? All right, so let's say you notice that you're feeling anxiety. You don't have to know why. It's not about figuring out who said what and why do I feel this now. That's just more mine. All that's about is let me figure out why I feel it so I can change it. All right, let me figure out what somebody said or somebody didn't say what I'm afraid of, so I now have the power and control to go out and change it so I don't feel anxious. That's not the path. You're going to do these things. I told you, don't listen to me. Just tonight, just listen for a moment, all right? And then see where you're going to go because that's a tendency to do that. I, I want to, why did you say that? Imagine, say, how could you say it to me? Why did you, I want to understand, why did you say that? It's like, why are you doing that? Why are you pestering this person why they said it? Because you want to make sure they never say it again. You want to find out the reason that they said that so I can control the world and not have this happen again. A spiritual person, a deep spiritual person does not do that. They see the anxiety, they see the fear, they see it, and they work with it within themselves directly. And that's where the work is. That's serious. Okay? I don't care how much you meditate. It matters to get out for a moment. You're coming back. And it's like looking at that part of your being and saying, what do I do about this? Not what did somebody else do or what do I need to make somebody else do or whatever it is. What do I do about this? Now you're getting into real spiritual techniques. So the first thing you do is decide, and I hope the talks help you, someday I got to work with this. Why not today? That's your first attitude. The Buddhists call it intent. My intent is that this thing's days are numbered. This thing in me that can close, I got some work to do, but I'm going to do that work. That's the meaning of my life. It's to make it so the door, as I told you once, it's not door of my heart open wide. It's door of my heart, no door. Take it off the hinges and throw it away. It will never close again, no matter what goes on. Wouldn't you like that? Okay. I will be able to stay open and clear no matter what happens. And then you've got some work to do. So you look at it. You see the anxiety. It's really in your heart. You'll see it. It's a, generally, it's third chakra, which it is. That's the ego chakra, the ego energy center. And it gets tight in there. And that closes the heart. And so you look at it and you try to do something to raise it. It's your job, but you have to be willing to have that intent. Not, I don't want to feel this. You are willing to feel it. Not that you want to feel it. You have to go out of your way to feel it. Don't worry about it. It'll find you. I am willing to feel this. Why? Because it's there. I'm in a hurdle race. I can run faster without those darn hurdles in the way, but that's not the race. <laughs> the race is you got to jump the hurdles, all right? So this is in the way then I got to work with it. I got work to do. So how do you work with it? First, I told you, your first is your intent. It's very deep because the tendency is to protect. Protect that, literally protect that so it's not being bothered. Don't you protect a part of your being so nothing bothers it, all right? Then you're keeping it. You're just basically saying, I want to keep you. I vote for you. You get to be the boss. That's what you're doing when you protect that. So inside, you sit there and say, no, I want to raise this so it's not happening like this anymore, not just because of this person, that situation, anything. I want to work with that part of my being so it's not causing this problem. How do you do it? First, your intent is there. You look at it. Can you sit inside and notice weird? Can you notice discomfort? You see, I'm talking honestly to you. Look at me, because you don't want to notice discomfort. You don't want it to be there. I don't want to feel uncomfortable. Well, if you don't want to feel uncomfortable, you do things to protect what part of you is uncomfortable. It's always going to be there. It's just that simple. And so you sit there and say, I am willing to work with that part of my being. Not blame anybody, not anything. It's here. All right, what do I do with it? First, first, you get a center where you notice I can handle this discomfort. Not I can make it go away. I can handle that it's there. If you have a child who's misbehaving, if you can handle them misbehaving, you stand a chance of working with them. You stand a chance of helping the situation. 
You do the same thing with this. Now I'm here. I'm centered. I'm clear. I'm not denying. I'm not ignoring the discomfort. I'm not getting into it. I'm sitting in the highest part of that being that I can, and I'm noticing here it is. And what I like to do is the first thing you ask it, have I ever felt this before? And I guarantee you the answer will never be no. You've lived with that your entire life at one level or another. Do you understand that? Different things stimulated it, but here I am. I'm finally ready to face it and work with it. All right, now, how do I work with it? First, I told you that. You have your intent. I want to work this through. I don't want that energy in me forever. Then you have the ability to be able to sit here clear enough so you're centered enough so you can do your job. Now, how do you do your job? Relax. Always relax. Relax. It's always the answer. Why? Because anxiety doesn't know how to relax. Tension doesn't know how to relax. Insecurity doesn't know how to relax. Those things are about tight, aren't they? They're about closing. They're about this, all right? Don't make them relax. This is what I try to get across to you guys. You don't make anxiety not be anxious. It's its nature. You don't make jealousy not be jealous. You don't make insecurity not be insecure. That is their nature. Everything has their nature. That is its nature. But then what do you mean by relax? You relax. You who is experiencing the anxiety, relax around it. Permit it to be, but you relax. You be comfortable. This is one that blows your mind. You learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. You in there, you, the consciousness. Yes, there's discomfort. I'm okay with that. I'm not trying to make it go away. I'm not doing techniques to rip it up and do this and do that. <laughs> I'm just, I realize, maybe like this, I get a boo-boo on your hand or something. You don't try to make believe it's not there. Yes, I have a hurt hand, okay? I have anxiety in my heart. There it is. I'm okay with that. Doesn't mean I'm gonna leave it there, but I have to be okay enough to be objective with it and be able to work with it. So now I feel discomfort for whatever it is, give it whatever name you want. Let's talk about anxiety, all right? So I feel this anxiety going on inside of me. I understand it. I'm okay with it. It's been there my whole life. It just came up different ways and different colors for different reasons, right? But I'm now conscious enough to where I'm going to work this through. I'm gonna work it so that it's not running my life anymore. Wouldn't that be nice? But the only one who can do that is you. I don't care who you meet. I don't care what money you get. I don't care what your job does. All that does is hide that. It makes sure so you don't have to deal with it. I was full of anxiety and jealousy. Now I'm not because I trust you. Don't worry. It won't work out well. You understand that? Because you didn't deal with your stuff. You used the situation to hide from yourself. Anybody listen to me? I've never talked this solid with you. Okay? That doesn't mean you don't deal with things outside. It's going to happen. That's fine. I'm glad things make you feel better. I'm glad. Right? But you got to work with this stuff when it's there. And so basically you see I'm anxious. There it is. Now what do I do? Try to relax. I mean it. I mean it. Because relaxation keeps you open. Tension keeps you closed. So try not to tense around it. Even if the only thing you can do, your heart's closed, but around the edges. Relax around the edges. Don't try to relax the main thing. Relax your shoulders, relax your tummy, relax your buttocks. Then what? Relax your shoulders, relax your tummy. Right? Just keep letting go. Keep relaxing. Keep letting go. Okay? So now the more you let go, the more you get a distance from what you're experiencing. Here I am. There it is. Let go. Here I am. There it is. Now you're ready to work with it. How do I work with it? I told you. I used to fight with him. I mean, man, that's, that was my whole, I came up through Zen, strict Zen, right? And not that I had never heard a Zen teacher, I just moved out of the middle of the woods and tried to practice Zen, all right? And it was very intense, right? And I thought I could beat him up and rip him away and throw him away, right? Well, you can't, all right? You can't. It's a part of your being that needs to be raised up so that, that energy can feed the higher part of your being. That's what happens, it's called transmutation of energy. And so what you do, I'll let you skip all the junk I had to go through. You sit there and look at that and realize you did that throughout the course of your life. Things happened to you that you were not comfortable with and you suppressed them. You shoved them away. You resisted them. So you stored all these junk inside of you. And so now it's very sensitive. The heart is broken. It's, it's, it's a target area that everything hits 
and you feel all this tension and insecurity. So first own it. Don't blame it on anybody. You own that you weren't able to deal with things well enough, so you stored them inside of you. So now you look at that part of your being with compassion, with love, with understanding. I told you once, it's the same as if you took a child and locked it in a closet because it was crying or something. That kid's going to be messed up. And when you let that kid out of the closet, oh, it's okay, I love you. That kid ain't going to talk to you. That kid don't want to get near you. A therapist is taught, give them their distance. Just sit at a distance and let them get comfortable that you're there. You can't hug them or hold them or try to, okay, it's over. Right? That don't mean squat. All right? You treat yourself that way. You treat your lower self that way. You look at it with compassion and understanding. Literally, you can say, I'm sorry that I shoved you down there. I'm sorry. I did it. I didn't know any better. I wasn't ready. I couldn't handle the situations. So I put this all on top of you. We're going to have a different relationship. I'm your friend, but it, it'll happen at your own speed. So you just change your attitude about the part of yourself that you're most uncomfortable with the part that's most weird, the part that has always caused so much trouble in your life. It ruins your relationships, doesn't it? Okay, you open your big mouth and say things or do things and you're sorry about it because this thing is not okay with stuff, all right? Come on, be honest. So you work with it in there. It's so beautiful when you get that relationship. And so what do you do? You first relax, you're relaxing, and then you see what can make it feel a little bit better. Breathing helps on that. Now you get into the techniques, but you have reasons for doing the techniques. They're not just discipline. You will find that breathing, Ramdas used to teach, and it works. Put a nostril on your heart. You can do it on the third chakra also, you know, the, the solar plexus. Put a nostril there as if a nostril was there and breathe in through that nostril. Do it with me. In your heart, then out. And breathe in. You will feel a flow of energy or pressure, call it whatever you want. You are literally working with opening that center instead of just leaving it all closed up. Right, You start working with that. If you're working on opening what is being closed, don't fight it, but I'm telling you, that will help. And I'm telling you, what else helps? Mantra helps a lot. We're all taught, so you know, if you grew up in those age, you're taught to do mantra. But you just do it because you're told to. You do it as the guru gave you a mantra. Now you understand that if you're there working with him or her that is in there, they're scared, they're tight. They're not opening. And it makes the mind think about what they're thinking about. The mind won't, you know that. The mind just keeps going back to what's wrong and what it's scared of and so on, right? So you breathe and you sit there. And then Master's mantra is as follows. God, Christ, Guru. God, 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 God. Whatever works for you. You sit there and say, talk to her. as a mantra, right? It's okay. I would love, maybe cry to think about it. Imagine she's tight. She's in there. It's okay, I'll take care of you. Oh, come on. It's okay, I'll take care of you. Instead of trying to push it away or fight away or getting into it to so express every bit of it. That's not though healthy, they teach you. <laughs> it's better than suppressing, it's better than suppressing. But the more you give into it, the more you're putting energy into it. What you wanna do is raise it up to you, not you go down to it, right? Just enough to have the relationship. You've developed a relationship with the part of your being that's closed, that's stored. And so you give it a mantra. It starts talking just instead, gently. I can handle this. I can handle this. Whatever means something to you. It's very beautiful to say, it's okay, I'll help you. Imagine that. You got this thing freaking out in there. It's okay, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. And you can reach your hand down, lift her up. These are all techniques, deep, deep spiritual techniques. They're not weird things, but they're deep spiritual techniques. And at some point, you're going to find that you can be there with, with him or her, all right? And you're working with it. It's not going to open right away. You're not going to sit there and do two breaths and the thing's going to open unless you're an enlightened master, okay? So now you're doing your breathing. You're doing this. You can talk to it, mantra, whatever you want, all right? Then you get to a point where it's comfortable, a little more opening. I'm telling you, you're allowed to reach down Get underneath it, get underneath all that mess and gently give it to God. Just lift it up, lift it up. You wanna call it God, you wanna call release it into the universe, 
I always talk to you about how big the universe is. It's got plenty of room for your stuff. Don't worry. You're not going to make it dirty. It's not polluting. Don't worry. You can't pollute God. And so you lift it up. You just offer it as, as a gift. I guarantee you, you take these flowers and the stuff we, we give out there, God would much rather have your stuff. That's true devotion. I'm going to give you the darkest part of my being and lay it at your feet. All right? Not, please take it. I'm not praying. I'm giving it to you. You don't have to take it. I can handle it, and there's a gift. And you just keep all these different things. I hope you're listening to me. All these different things you can do anytime you want. You're inside. You're, you're the only one who lives in there. It's your world. This is called changing your world inside. And you do it regularly. You do it all the time. Anytime you start to close, you can, you can say, if it's not appropriate, wherever you're doing, you're doing work, this, that, anything like that, or fighting with somebody, <laughs> having an argument, it's not going to work real good. But when you step aside and you quiet down, please work with it. Because your mind's going to say, I was right. No, 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 no. You'll see it's all in the third and fourth chakra. It's in the third chakra and then the start of the fourth, the lower part of the fourth, it's going to close. You're going to feel weird. You're going to feel closed. It's going to mess your energy up, whatever words you want to use. That is a good thing. You have to learn to appreciate it, to respect it, to realize this is my opportunity for dealing with the lower part of my being so it stops holding me down. Remember I said you can work on trying to get up or you can let go of what's holding you down. It is way higher in the end to work on what's holding you down. Way higher. And as you work with it, you're going to find out you're capable of helping that. You're capable of healing yourself. You're capable of raising yourself. And when you do that, you start realizing, I don't have to be afraid of things happening that cause me to get weird because I'm using my time when I get weird to go to God. I'm using those times as a positive, constructive thing. And eventually something else you can say to it when it hurts. You can sit there and say, eventually, you can't do it right away. You can't lie. You just sit there and say, I love it. You love what? I love the pain. I love the discomfort. I love the weirdness that I feel. I love that this is happening. It's like, can you love weather? Can you love a storm? Right? I used to live in Miami. Hurricanes would come through, right? We used to, for kids, we'd look out the windows, right? It's like, it's like you can love things that you used to be afraid of, that you used to hate. At first, use affirmation. I love this. I love this feeling of weirdness. I love this cloak at the heart. What a mess it is. I love it. This is so neat. What an opportunity. And just use that positive thinking, that positive aspect to leave yourself in a situation where you can work with yourself. And so what's going to happen? You're going to, first of all, just to talk to you about it, I love it. You can change everything inside yourself. You're the only one who lives in there. Everything that's going on in there, you did it. There's nobody else in there. You're the one who couldn't handle stuff. You're the one who pushed it away. You're the ones who got weird. You're the ones who tried to protect yourself. You did every single thing that's going on in there. Other things were just stimuli, which hit your stuff. So when you reach the point that you're really spiritual, every minute of your life is about raising the lower part of your being. Well, what happens when I let it go? It turns into higher energy. It does what's called transmutation. That's a big word. It's very mystical, right? The people understand it. What it means is you've blocked energy inside of you. That's what you've done when you push this stuff away that's not comfortable to you. So you have a storehouse of blocked energy. And I once tried to tell you how much energy that is. I'm not sure I got it through, all right? So here, there's this energy that takes place. Mommy, daddy got divorced. This happened. You broke up with your boyfriend. Somebody left you. Whatever it is, all right? That's energy. It's energy from the outside world coming in, trying to pass through you. Everything's energy. Everything's energy. It comes in and passes through. Well, you didn't let it pass through. So you held that energy. How much energy did it take to resist that energy? You know, physics, equal and opposite. It took the same amount of energy to hold it in as the natural energy of what it is. How much power does the Hoover Dam need to stop the Colorado River? One billionth of amount more than the power of the river <laughs> okay the river's flowing and trying to push down there it better be that strong and a little bit stronger otherwise it's going to break that's the same thing inside of you the energy comes in it's a, some fear some anxiety somebody did something bad those are all energy everything's energy you know that you feel energy it comes in you have to now apply an equal 
an opposite amount of energy, of your energy, of your chi, of your shakti, of your free energy to push that thing down and hold it there for the rest of your life. It will not go away by itself. It doesn't dissipate. Until you're ready to let it go and stop resisting it, it's going to stay there. The Colorado River is pushing just as hard today against the Hoover Dam as it was when they built the damn thing. Excuse me. <laughs> Do you understand that? Right? Why? It has to flow. It's trying to flow. That's what's happening inside of you. So you got this one thing, then somebody didn't say something, and a friend didn't do it, and then it rained on your birthday party. And uh, come on, don't tell me you're not sensitive about stuff in there. That's because you stored it in there. So now you have the energy of your being that's supposed to be raising you up is being used to hold that down. So now what do you do? Now that you have all these problems inside, you use another layer of energy. I'm surprised you have any left. Some people don't. They get so traumatized that they can't do anything. So depressed and so screwed up that they, they can't act. They can't do it. Some people can't talk. They can't do anything. That's because they've blocked all their energy in blocking the energy. Do they understand that? Do we have so far? That's nothing. Now what do you do? Now that you wasted all that energy, holding back all that energy, you use the rest of your energy to figure out how to manipulate everybody else so it doesn't hit your blockages. What do I do? How do I do that? I'm afraid. Right? You just, oh my God, I'm surprised you have any energy left. You don't, not compared to who you are. You have no idea who you are. You have so much energy. You're a very great being. You understand that? You're a great being. But I just showed you, how come I don't feel it? Because you wasted all of it, almost all of it, to hold back that which you couldn't handle. Because you know it's still trying to come up. It comes up in your dreams. Anytime somebody says something, you know, they don't hit my stuff. That's your stuff. You got plenty of it, don't you? And Freud taught you, it's, it's there your whole life, childhood, all the way through, okay? And so you're holding that there. Then I told you, now that you've wasted the energy to hold that down, it will not stay down by itself. Just like the, the, if the Hoover Dam's not there, the Colorado's coming right through. Thank you. Forget history. It's just going to go right through, isn't it? Same thing here. But you won't let it. So you're using all this energy to hold it down. Now, because you're so uncomfortable and you're not feeling love, you're not feeling joy, you're not feeling inspiration in life, and you're feeling guilty, whatever the heck it is, you now have to use energy to figure out what to do to not have to deal with yourself. You can't deal with yourself, so you have to find out, well, I'll get a good degree, I'll get another thing, I'll become this, or I'll do that, I'll date somebody, I'll have this thing, I'll do that, I'll dress this way. Yeah, figure, go on, figure it all out. That's a lot of energy. All right, but just because you figured out now what you think will make you be okay because you're not okay, now you have to go make it happen. How much energy? What are we doing here? It's a complete waste of Shakti, complete waste of Chi. Boy, is that a wasteful thing, this human thing over there, making a mess of themselves and fighting with it and fighting with everybody else to try and make them be the way they should. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, all right, that's what it means to understand energy. So, what do you do? If you work directly with the part of your being that is so sensitive and so close, just work at that root. And if you want, you can renounce something. You can do this, right? But that's way out here. I tell you, that's like seven step outs. <laughs> work with the core. The core of the problem is that you can't handle yourself. So you come down, you get yourself at least clear enough to where you have objective observation, witness consciousness, and you start to work with yourself. And it can't not work. You know, if you work with the root of a plant, everything changes. You know, these, these carnations that look peppermint-like, that's not natural. Or blue. They No, they're not blue. They just put dye down in the roots, and it comes up and fills all the veins up. How did they get all the veins to be candy cane colored? You work at the root, everything's easy. It then takes care of itself. If you work at the root of your being, and don't ask me where it is, because you know where it is. It's the part you don't want to deal with. You understand that? And so you start dealing with it, gently, gently. All right? And so basically, I told you, the Gita says, one should raise the self with self, not trample down the self. For self, which can be self's friend, can become self's foe. And it literally goes further. Self becomes self's foe if it knows itself is not itself. It's playing with Atman. Capitalized Atman, meaning the higher self, and lower Atman, meaning the personal self. You raise it. You raise it up. So I've given you technique after technique. Those are the real techniques. Those are the techniques of how you work with yourself. As you raise it, what you'll find out is eventually 
you become friends. You can be friends with your lower self. And eventually, I'm telling you, it's a very great moment, she or he, when feels trouble, will reach up for you. Instead of reaching out or manipulating or causing trouble, it will realize you are the safety. You are, Master said, receive me on thy lap, divine mother. That's what he's saying, is I got, I'm a kid, I got these problems, but she's inside, mother's inside of me. That's you, the consciousness. And when it reaches up, that's when the energy changes direction. The energy, instead of going down, you don't realize it now, your energy is going down and out all the time, down and out, down and out. It changes direction. You don't do anything. Just from now on, it's just from now on, just leave. pouring up inside of you, feeding you love, bliss, everything is going on. That's because the lower self has stopped resisting, hiding, and it realized, wait, it's nice up there. I want to go up there. Isn't that neat? Imagine that the kid that's causing all kinds of trouble realizes, God, you know, if I get myself together, life's a much nicer place. I want to be with that kid. All right? And then all of a sudden, they're on your side. So your lower self can transmute into higher energy. And then once it starts going up, it's over. I mean, I'll just spend a moment with it, right? Why? Because it's so beautiful. The energy flow, the Shakti flow is just, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. Why? When you feel love, what you're feeling is Shakti. When you feel excited, you're feeling Shakti. This is pure Shakti for no reason. It's just pouring up inside of you. And you start noticing that if you give in to the lower energies at all, it stops. So she's your teacher. Shakti is your guru. I don't want it to stop. So it's like sometimes you guys learn how to eat food reasonably, right? Not to be perfect, but reasonably. Now I go eat some garbage. Twinkies and Coca-Cola. Six pack of Coke and 14 Twinkies. See how you feel. It's the same thing with the world. You're feeling fine. Now you go eat garbage. You eat, you eat junk. You, you do something that hurts yourself. You do something that causes problems inside. So for a moment it feels good, but then you got a stomach ache inside. So you stop doing it. Why? Because you're not stupid. Nobody has to tell you. People say to me, how do I know what to do? You will know what to do because the Shakti will change in its flow. So how do I know what to eat? I don't know. How do animals know not to eat poisonous plants? I don't see armadillos lying dead all over the place. <laughs> you hear me? How can animals know this? Because they feel the energy. It's not that they memorize it and read a book. There's energy being exchanged. You will start to feel that energy. If you walk up to food that you're not supposed to eat, you will know it before you even get there. The energy will just shift and feel weird. And you walk away and it stops. If you get near food, that is really what you need and it's right there. Oh my God, you'll be attracted to it. It'll pull you to it. But now you eat junk because you're nervous. You say, I don't, I'm scared. And so you shove some food in your mouth. All right. When you're done with that, you will know what to do. It's natural. Nobody has to tell you what to do. The energy flow will start flowing in a way and you, you become subtle enough to listen. Why do you listen? Because if you don't listen, you get sick inwardly. And if you do listen, you feel wonderful. And who doesn't want to feel wonderful? And so you start listening. It's really very beautiful. Your grandma once said, when you come in tune, God will tell you every single thing, what to wear in the morning, what to eat, what to say. What he means is you'll feel the Shakti. You'll feel the Shakti shift and you just listen to it. And it's always right. But will it ever lead me into anything that's difficult? It's supposed to <laughs> because it wants to free itself from your blockages. And so you sit there and you go through what you need to go through. People say, I'm really giving you deep here. People say, well, how will I know what I need to go through? Because you're trying to work with yourself and the next thing you know, you're somewhere else. You didn't decide to go there. You weren't ready to not go there. Are you listening to me? It happens. It happens. You, you, you keep your eyes at transmuting, raising yourself. But does that mean that I don't have relationships? That doesn't mean I don't have money. That doesn't mean I don't work. There's nothing like that. It doesn't mean anything like that. It means you do your best to work with her, to raise her, to not let her run your life. Do not let the lowest part of your being run your life. But you all are doing it. Everybody does it. That's why the world is the way it is. Why do people go to war with each other? Because they can't handle themselves. They're trying to create situations that make them more comfortable. So the lowest part of human being is running. That's why this plane is not so high. The lowest part of our being is running our lives. Well, you be different. You don't let the lowest part of your being. You work with the lowest part of your being. Raise it up the best you can. And I'm telling you, eventually, this energy will start flowing up naturally because you got rid of some of the blockages and you transmuted. That energy, which was insecurity, all of a sudden becomes strength because it rose up. 
you let it go and you keep working with it. And eventually it will get so high that it becomes your entire life. There will never be a moment of your life that it's not your life. It will flow up. Master used to say, take your attention to put it at the point between your eyebrows and don't take it off. And that's higher than Kriya Yoga. It's higher than everything, right? You will reach a point where you couldn't take it off if you tried. It's just pouring up there all the time, every second of your life, to the point between your eyebrows, because that's a very high center, that and the Sahasra of six chakra and seven chakra. You're not doing anything. Because you work with yourself at the lower level, all that happens naturally, and it will take you the rest of the way. You don't do anything. And everything we've talked about so far is nothing in terms of high spirituality. That's why the concept of what you think is high is nothing. So that's going on. You're listening to that, and then what starts to happen is you, your consciousness itself doesn't want to go down anymore. It doesn't need to be pulled down. It doesn't need to do that. It's just being pulled up. And it's feeling all this ecstasy going on. And somehow life, it's just amazing to talk about. Life just takes care of itself. I don't know. The right person shows up at the right time. The right thing happens. Even if it looks wrong, you don't understand it. You do it because it's happening. You look back later and it was perfect. Everything's perfect. And you realize that everything is perfect except your garbage is making everything look wrong because your garbage wants things to be a certain way. You get to a point where there is no way. There is no way you want it to be. Why would you? You're filled with love. You're filled with ecstasy. And you just keep letting go. And then different situations happen that are difficult. And that's supposed to be. The problems are the nectar of life, Yoga Shakti used to say. So you're high, it's clear. Then why did God do this to me? God didn't do anything to you. If you have stuff, you're going to see it that way because you're looking through the veil of your stuff. No one likes me. That's not true that no one likes you. But if you have that insecurity and you look out, everything you're going to see is people that don't like you, people that are judging you. You're just projecting your problems as you look out into the world. Well, that's very good because then you'll learn to deal with it. And so these things will come and you'll have to deal with them and you'll get higher and you'll deal with them and get higher. And eventually you'll catch on. This is wonderful. Life is wonderful. Life is my teacher. Life is my path. It's all happening naturally. I don't have to do anything. I just get let go, let go of myself. And who said that? Christ. A nice Jewish yogi. Christ's teachings are phenomenal. What did he say about what I just said? You have to die to be reborn. I just said that, didn't I? <laughs> right? You have to die of the personal self, of the party that's personal and closed, in order to be spiritual, in order to raise up. I started the talk telling you that. Do you want to try to make yourself go up even if something holding you down? Or do you want to get rid of holding you down? He said, you have to die to be reborn. That's exactly what he's talking about, and he's exactly right. And so you start realizing this is a beautiful path. This is a beautiful life. Earth is a place that souls are sent to evolve. Earth is a place that souls are sent to evolve. How are you doing? Because most people are trying not to evolve. Now, that sounds really harsh. No, they're trying to get everything the way they need it to be so they don't feel weird. In other words, not evolve. I don't want to change. In the... Sanctuary Wisdom over at the Cardiovascular Neuro Hospital. There's an Einstein electronic photo thing. And one of the things that Einstein said, with a picture of Einstein, so beautiful, he said, in order to change, you have to be willing to let go of who you are. He was a very smart man. There's no such thing as growing without changing. You can't stay the way you are and then change, can you? You have to be willing to die to be reborn. Again, give up what it is. And so you reach the point that you understand life is pulling me through myself. It's pulling me through. Am I willing to do it? Or am I saying, which whatever I'm saying, I have a way I want it to be. That's all due to your blockages. And I want it to be that way. And I don't want it to change. I want you to behave a certain way and you to treat me this way and you to be this way, my finances to be that way and my health to be that way. Every single thing has to freeze so that I'm okay with it. But then you'll never grow. That's not what it means when it says earth is a place where souls are sent to evolve. A plant can't grow without changing, can it? Your body went through changes when you're growing. Nothing grows without changing. But you're not willing to change because you're scared to death. That thing inside of you just wants to be protected inside of a, a fortress. And I know that nothing will ever touch it. Then you won't grow. It won't change. So you work with yourself to help your evolution. And then what you're going to catch on is the world goes about its business. And you see, can I handle it? That's all about it. Can I handle the reality that's coming into me? And if I can't, that's an opportunity to let go of the part of me that can't. 
Now, I always I really have to stress it. That does not mean you don't deal with things. It means you don't deal with them as a way of protecting yourself. You don't deal as a way of getting what you want, so you don't have to deal with yourself. doesn't mean you don't deal with them. It comes in, you deal with it. Okay, I'll let go what I need to let go of. I'm here, I'm fine now. Is there something I am supposed to be doing? A few minutes left, usually I don't. There's the essence now. Is there something I'm supposed to be doing with the moment that's just unfolded in front of me? It already messed me up, but I got clear. I let go of what it hit. Is there something I'm supposed to be doing? And you're gonna find out that 90 to 95% of the time, the answer is no. The only reason I thought I had to do something is I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle what she said. I can't know what happened. I couldn't handle this. I can't handle that. Now I have to do something to make it so I can handle it. That should not be your motive for action. Okay, I handle it. It wasn't comfortable. I handle it. Now, is there something I'm supposed to be doing? And sometimes the answer is yes. Yes. The boss just came to you and sat there and said, I can't believe you gave me this project plan. It's terrible. I, oh my God, it's awful. By the way, you didn't do it. Your coworker did it. But the boss is yelling at you and said, here, this is what I want. This is there. So everything inside is going crazy. I didn't do it. Blah, 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 leave me alone. They're stupid. But I don't want to work here anyway. <laughs> so cute. All right. In other words, you couldn't handle what happened. So what do you do? You relax. You work on it. You let go. Now that you've let go of that, is there something you're supposed to be doing? Yes, what the boss told you to do. It's so beautiful. When you get your personal self out of the way, you will know what you're supposed to be doing. Now, how do I do that? I don't do it to please the boss. I don't do it to protect my coworker. I do it because the universe itself, the whole galaxies, everything is doing something. Everything's doing something, isn't it? Right? Centrifugal force and gravity are holding the planets in place. Everything in the whole universe at every moment is doing something. And this is your job. Wow. Well, this is your job. It doesn't matter what it is. It's the job that was given to you to do at this moment. And you just see it as God came down. And would you do this for me, please? I'm running the universe. This is a part that you can help me with. And you can't do that if your personal self's involved because you have this like and dislike. You have personal things. I don't want to do it. It's not fair. I shouldn't have to do it. <laughs> All kinds of stuff, right? I don't know if I like this here. It's all about I. When you work through and you let go of yourself, you can serve. You serve. And my experience is, if you read the Schroeder experiment, you know that, and I'm not the only person, is that's called the Tao. It's called you're doing the right action, not because it's personal. It's just given to you. And it will lead to the next thing, which will lead to the next thing. And you realize the whole universe is perfect. I mean, the rain waters the forests, and they're, you know, it's just, it all works pretty darn good, but it doesn't rain when you want it to, or it rains when you don't want it to. That's because your eye ruins everything. When you get that out of the way, which is what you're doing as you let go of this garbage, you will see a harmony unfolding in the universe. And you just do your best to serve what's in front of you. And you're not looking for a reward. I mean, if God came down here literally like Moses the burning bush, right? And sat there and said, here, do this, all right? You don't do it to get anything. You say, wow, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> you know, God told me, all right? And you sit there and do it. You do it with all your heart as an act of devotion. Every single thing you do from that moment on when you're free inside is an act of service, an act of devotion. You don't need anything. It's just so neat to do what's given for you to do. Take out the garbage, do this, brush the dog, do your homework, whatever it is. Whatever it is, you have something that you're supposed to be doing at this moment, and it will lead to the next thing, which leads to the next thing. But you start by making the meaning of your life to not let your ego, the lowest part of your being, to be the meaning of your life. You understand that? That's where you start. You do not let the lowest part of your being run your life. How? You don't throw it away. You don't ignore it. You don't renounce it. You raise her. You work with her with compassion, with understanding. You take her by the hand. If she's scared to give a talk, work with her. We're going to have fun. It doesn't matter. We're okay. And just keep raising her, raising her. It's a journey of a lifetime. And what I said, what's going to happen, you come see what happens because I'll see it in your eyes. The energy will change direction. And all of a sudden, you're a being of life. And then you serve, and your whole life becomes really beautiful. You're going to have his favorite quote in the Bible. He used it, I think, in autobiography. Is the dedication page to autobiography was, Seek ye first the kingdom of God as righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. Not think what you want and attract it to yourself. Seek ye first the kingdom of God as righteousness. How do you do that? By letting go of yourself. And all things will happen naturally. All right.
People say, I don't give techniques. I gave you a technique, didn't I? How to raise yourself. Mm, Jigrative. You've been listening to The Michael Singer Podcast, produced by Sounds True in partnership with Shanti Publications. For more information on Michael's body of work and all back episodes, please join us at michaelsingerpodcast.com. Thanks so much for listening. Sounds True, waking up the world.